Hi everyone. Today I'm talking about how to attract healthy relationships. This is a hot topic of late. <clears throat> Doesn't everyone want to be in a healthy relationship? But if you find yourself repeatedly in relationships, like the one I have with my cat, um, that leave you feeling like you are repeating patterns that leave you feeling unhappy and confused and maybe even traumatized or lost or just overwhelmed with why things keep going wrong the same way. Or if you feel like you keep dating or marrying or choosing on some level, a partner that reminds you of a parent from your past who was not kind to you, perhaps who could not show up, perhaps who was abusive, neglectful, and abuse can be described in a lot of different ways. I'm not gonna go into those details today, but what I do wanna talk about is addressing the pattern that some of us find ourselves in of attracting relationships that are not what we say we want, but nonetheless, similar themes keep emerging. And in deep, deep, deep down in the center of your heart, what you crave is a healthy relationship. If that's the case, then let's talk about how to actually make that happen. So first of all, there is nothing wrong with you that you have had a series of unhealthy or toxic or narcissistic abuse relationships. I want you to really hear that loud and clear. There's nothing wrong with you that this has happened. What it means is that on a very deep level, your soul and your inner child yearn to heal. And these repeated patterns are just continued opportunities to heal on a deeper level. It does not mean that you're getting it wrong. It means there are deeper layers of healing that are unfolding for you. And the more we beat ourselves up about being broken or too messed up for healthy relationships, or I'm never going to have that thing that so-and-so has, or that you imagine um, a friend or a celebrity or someone on YouTube or on Instagram has, the more you beat yourself up, the more you actually are contributing to that pattern that you might find yourself in. So what is the healing for this? How do we really break that pattern? So the trick is to develop the opposite relationship with yourself, with yourself, that you've had in those unhealthy relationships. And usually this starts with the earliest relationships we've had in our lives with one or more caregivers that just couldn't show up for us in a healthy way. A lot of us come from parents that were simply emotionally immature. And I'm gonna stay away from any topics or labels like narcissism or sociopathy today. We'll address those in another video. But what is safe to assume because those are dangerous labels at times are not always uh, accurate and they can be really helpful and healing for some people but for our purposes today suffice to say that a lot of us had models in front of us as children of emotionally immature relationships and we had to often meet the needs of our caregivers because they were unable to meet their own emotional needs in a healthy and mature way so what does that mean well maturity, there's a lot that could be said about what it means to be a mature adult, but maturity is really about the ability to have an integrated sense of self that exists outside external circumstances. That means we can make a mistake, even harm or hurt someone unintentionally usually, or perhaps intentionally, but usually if we are hurting someone's feelings or injuring someone we care about, it's unintentional. And so an integrated sense of self, or what in mental health we call ego strength, comes from the ability to integrate ourselves as flawed human beings that make mistakes, who are also inherently worthy and lovable and special and deserving of healthy, loving relationships we, where we are emotionally safe and feel safely, um, safe in a space where we can be heard and seen and, and deeply understood. It's that deep soul's need for connection that every human being has. So when we have a lot of models for emotional immaturity in our relationships, we will tend to 
feel like that is something we have mastery of, that that equates love. And there's lots of other people out there who've talked about that, that that's our sense of home and that we tend to go to relationships that replicate that sense, sense of home inside or familiarity. And again, it's a dangerous place where we can say, oh, but I know that, you know, I didn't see that she was just like my mom or just like my dad, or they had all these characteristics that I thought were totally different than that person that raised me, that I feel like totally didn't get me and wasn't there for me. And yet I keep choosing variations of that same partner over and over again. What is wrong with me? Again, we got to cut out the beating up, no self beratement. That is child abuse, that is inner child abuse. And we don't tolerate that in this house. So that's what I often say to clients is, this is your house. And I always tell my kids, we don't speak that way in this house. If I hear name calling or derogatory words or anything that does not convey respect and kindness, we don't say that in this house. Well, that is the motto we have to have up here. So when we hear ourselves berating ourselves for patterns we see in relationships, no, 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 no. We don't talk that way in this house, dear one. That's the kind of kindness and compassion we have to come towards ourselves, our soul and our inner child with as often as we can catch ourselves. And then when we catch ourselves, we can't beat ourselves up for doing that. So imagine that you have been conditioned that someone that isn't very emotionally available, doesn't really see you. Talking about parents here, maybe so consumed with their own lives or ill, had a medical diagnosis uh, most of your childhood, uh, abandoned you, left, um, perhaps other family members had to care for you. Perhaps there was drug or alcohol abuse, domestic violence. In those cases, your blueprint for home is of course, chaos, toxicity, lack of emotional availability, uh, approach withdrawal. I really am connected and I see you sometimes and then you get too close and I pull away. Or you're really special and wonderful right now because you're doing what I want you to do or you're looking the way I want you to look and then that changes and then I withdraw my love away. Or I'm distracted, maybe a, part, a parent was distracted by multiple partners that came and went. For whatever reason, your body then becomes very acclimated to that feeling of abandonment and betrayal and lack of being seen and lack of being heard. So when we change the pattern, it's through incremental small steps towards ourselves that is the opposite of that. It is about developing the kind of relationship with yourself that is so compassionate so encouraging, so non-judgmental, so patient, so deeply, genuinely kind, so high-hearted. I really love that phrase. My dear friend Rebecca Holt used that phrase in a sound bath meditation recently and I thought, oh, high-hearted. Yes, that is what it feels like when you're with someone who's safe emotionally. It comes from a high-hearted place. When we turn that attention towards ourselves, and quite literally, this means looking in the mirror. This is inner child work. This means looking in the mirror, connecting to the image of our youngest self, seeing ourselves as lovable and worthy, and not tolerating that abuse in this house, getting so deeply familiar with that. And again, this just happens through practice. It is a muscle that needs to be developed through exercise. As that happens over time, with lots and lots of little bits of practice, catching yourself, bringing loving kindness back to yourself, I promise you this is what starts to happen. The love and commitment you make to yourself, your inner child, your soul, that becomes your new habit. That becomes your new normal. That becomes your new sense of home. And anything that doesn't resonate with that, anything that is dissonant from that, anyone who comes into your sphere, we're talking colleagues, friends, family members, and then what to do with that is a whole nother video, but um, certainly intimate partners, people were dating, people were vetting, because vetting is a very important process. 
the begin is for another video. But when we are having people come into our sphere, the stronger that relationship is with self, the more familiar compassion and love and kindness and patience is. The more times we've said, how am I actually feeling? What do I actually want in this situation? Someone asked to borrow my car, I just automatically said yes. Do I really wanna do that? The more we've checked in with ourselves, the more we will very quickly, days, hours, maybe months, but you're not gonna spend six months to a year or five years or 10 years or 20 years in a relationship again when you have committed to building that relationship with yourself over time, with all those little interactions with yourself. It just, you will lose the attraction to the toxic people. They will not seem interesting. They will seem abrasive. Your inner child will basically look at you like this and you'll say, come on, sweetie, we're out of here. <laughs> Shabam, we're done, we're gone. Like this is not a place for us. And it doesn't mean demonizing other people, labeling them, judging them. It's simply that process of discernment around what is really truly serving us. Because when we serve ourselves, we are filled up to give to the world, to our partners that are healthy, our children, our friends, our community, and global macro systems out there for those of us that are doing social justice work in whatever way that plays out for you. That's how we're able to show up for ourselves by being extremely discerning with who we let into our space. And as we, bit by bit, exit folks out that aren't resonant with that deep sense of, I'm worthy of respect and attention and love and non-judgment and compassion, even when I blow it, even when I'm a brat, even when I'm grumpy or hormonal or I snap, when we can recognize that we do those things and we have love for ourselves, we're able to say, ugh. And your integrated ego, your strong, strong ego comes up and says, wow, I blew it. And I'm still a good person. And when those two things come together, then you're the healthy person in that relationship saying, I am so sorry. I really apologize. That is not what I meant to say. You didn't deserve that. Can we start over? I ask for your forgiveness. That's not groveling, that's not trying to be good and then never saying anything about how you feel again. It's just owning it and then moving on. And when we do that, we attract the same kind of person and if they can't show up like that, next. So that new sense of home is what I'd like to encourage us all, myself included, this because this is a life's work, to practice on a daily basis where the relationship with ourselves is loving and kind. I hope this is helpful for you. Today's affirmation is not all who knock may enter. Not all who knock may enter. And so I leave you with loving kindness meditation. May you be happy. May you be well. May you live with ease. May you be at peace. Until next time, friends.